Hi, Achim Schloss von Inner Space Explorers. Um, new video today, and the topic is uh, the balance trick. Um, I received a lot of questions about that because the term appears in a lot of our training materials and in a lot of my uh, a lot of my videos, and um, so we need to talk about this. So the problem, the core of the problem that we discussed today, is cheap and crappy training that creates bad educated instructor trainers that act as multiplicators, create uneducated and bad instructors that then create uneducated students. What is a balanced trick? A balanced trick is a streamlined um, assembly of a buoyancy device, a tank, a regulator and the thermal protection of a diver that works throughout the dive, including all the buoyancy changes that occur when the tank's going to be emptied. And that makes sure that you're not overweighted or underweighted at any point, part of the dive. So what I see a lot of times, or what I see most of the time, is overweighted divers. So the question is always, why are these people overweighted? Well, the first thing is that the initial concept is wrong. So I recently watched somebody teaching an open water class and it was one of the first sessions. So people all had like seven millimeter wetsuits. They get a 10 liter tank on the back. And then the guy just added weight belts till they finally went down. And then afterwards, when somebody was asking, he said, yeah, well, if you need a bigger tank, you just need less weight. What? <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but, but I mean, it's not a rule. And um, the same thing when, when I'm teaching and people come to me and they show me their equipment and I ask like, how much does your tank weight? Normally I can't get an answer because people are like, what do you mean, how, what does it weight? Well, the weight of the tank because the ratio between volume and weight obviously is the key to figure out how much weight do I need. So if I take a 12 liter tank and it has 12 kilos, it's neutral in the water. So it's just the amount of weight that the compressed gas that I fill in adds that I need um, to compensate. But if I take a 12 liter tank that has close to 15 kilos, it's obviously three kilos negative already when it's empty. So it's a huge difference. So it's, it's complete nonsense to say, well, if you take a 12 liter tank, you need that much amount of weight. It's just simply wrong. And then the other thing is, how is my rig? I mean, do I have a stainless steel backplate? Do I have an aluminum backplate or even a carbon or a titanium backplate? And uh, what kind of thermal protection do I use? Do I use a five millimeter suit, a three millimeter suit, dry suit? If I use a dry suit, is it a neoprene? Is it a trilaminate? What kind of undergarment do I use? This is all factors that in the end um, lead to a different need of weight that I need. Stupid sentence. Anyway, um, so then you see people using, let's say, a dry suit with a heavy 400 gram undergarment, an aluminum backplate, and a set of double 80s, and then obviously they have a fat weight belt, which then ruins the balance of their rig because it's too much weight that sits in a not ideal position, like around the hip, for example, and brings them out of trim, and then I'm calling it an unbalanced rig. Plus, always there's a chance of losing the weight especially when you use a weight belt. Um, and then you have a real problem because you cannot compensate for that. So when we talk balanced trick, we talk about the components fitting together. So right now, being on Elba, diving a five millimeter wetsuit and a very lightweight travel rig with a titanium backplate. I'm diving an 80 cubic feet aluminum tank that is almost neutral when it's full and about one and a half kilos positive when it's empty. I need about four kilos of weight that I attach in the twin weight pockets on my cylinder. And that means I can comfortably hold my depth at about three meters with an almost empty tank. So at the other hand, that means if the tank's full, I have a little bit more weight than I need, but it's not more than I could comfortably swim to the surface if my wing would fail. So that's the two things you want to achieve. So obviously when I'm 
when I'm diving, let, let's go back to the example that I just brought. Somebody's diving a, a, a dry suit with a heavy undergarment. So obviously I'm not going to take a very light backplate and very light tanks. So let's say I have to use the very light backplate because I'm traveling and uh, I, need, I, I want to uh, save some weight on my, on my flying luggage. Then at least I, I see that I can use some heavy tanks. So let's say uh, I have a double 12 sitting at home that has 14.9 kilos each tank, so that's a really heavy tank. So it would be a good start to set up a rig like that with a, with a light white back plate. So if I need weight, it's not that much that I have to add because there's always also a limit of how much weight can I add to a rig. Um, let's say uh, on, on a double uh, set, I mean, what kind of V-weight do you want to put in? I mean, for sure not a lead bar like this. So if I have a chance, I would probably go for a stainless steel back plate. Um, we could extend that to side mount, but I'm not going to do that. There's uh, actually a video about that, or actually more than one video in this channel where we discuss this, the heavy tanks, light tanks, and so on. Um, but yeah, it was important for me to, to point out what we mean when we talk about a balanced rig. I hope I got that idea across and uh, that clarified a few things. Um, there was a request for how to balance a recreational rig uh, that will follow in a couple of days. And uh, yeah, if you have questions, post them in the comment section. If you like it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.